Hello everyone, Colin Kinnett here for Woodwork Web. Today I want to talk about anti-skid materials and where you can use it. In fact, this video is going to be another one of our interactive videos, so we'd like to hear from you what uses you have for this stuff because I'm sure there's a whole world of applications for using this anti-skid material that many of us haven't even heard of yet, so we'd like to hear where you use it because I think this is some of the best material that you can use in your workshop. Now what I'm talking about is this anti-slip material. It's like a, a plastic, almost like a plastic or a rubbery kind of mat. And you know what, I buy this stuff, I buy this very thin material. It comes in different grades and I buy this very thin grade. I get it from the dollar store and I only buy black because then I can, I don't have to worry about mix and matching colors if it makes any difference, but I always just buy black because it's consistent and I can use it on a lot of different things. And I'm going to show you some of the uses that I have, but we want to hear what uses you have. Now, there's also a thicker, and this stuff is really inexpensive and it comes in different size different size rolls and so on but I also have a thicker material and this is sold from a number of the, the lumber stores and tool places as this is sold as very often as a router anti-skid material and it's quite a bit thicker you can't really see that uh, material on the video because it it's, there's not that much difference in the thickness but this is quite a bit thicker material and they both work remarkably well, but I'm going to show you some of the applications that I've used for this, and we'd like to hear what you could, what applications you've used it for, uh, or what applications it could be used for. Now, I don't know about you, but my workbench is often cluttered with stuff, a little bit more today, but I'm often working on some sort of a project, and right now I've, I've got a little box, and we've shown you this anti-skid material before. These are these little uh, pucks, little like hockey pucks. Uh, this particular one is from Rockler and they're great because they actually lift things off the workbench and if you're working with a little bit of a dusty or cluttered workbench like I often am, it gets whatever you're working on up off the dust and whatever screws and bits there might be down there, um, sawdust and bits of, of wood and it lifts it off and it, it allows you to paint and it, it works well. They, they grip very well. Another similar version to that uh, we just acquired not long ago, these grabbers and they were similar to this but they're a much lower profile and you can see the difference between the two of them. This is much lower and I like these because they still lift whatever you're working with, they still lift it off the, the surface, but there's a little bit less tendency for it to be tippy if it's a small piece that you're working on like this one. So we really like these grabbers and they're available from a, a variety of sources and we'll put uh, some clips on here so you can see where you can get some of this stuff. But let's go back now and look at the, the material that um, the anti-skid material, I guess the thin one's fallen off my workbench. Um, so let's look at some of the applications that I've used some of this for. Now this was one of the first applications and again this is the the thin material that I get you know just from the dollar store uh, was to line the inside of my drawers from my cabinet with this and the reason I did that was because the constant pulling in and out my tools would often be, they'd be crashing together, but usually they'd be, they'd be sort of uh, flowing around in the bottom of this drawer uh, and bunching up together and turning every which way. And this way, you, you can move that around and nothing moves in there. And all I do to secure this is just simply staple this down to the bottom of the drawer. And it works great. If you get a little bit of dust in there, you just pull the drawer out, flip it upside down, knock the dust out. You can give it a little bit of a spray with a a hose or something and that works just great. I've been using that in all of my drawers for uh, anti-skid and it stops my tools from moving around. 
just recently I built this holder for all of my clamps and all it is is a piece of wood same piece of wood up and lower down and I'll show you that in a second but what I did and you can see on there I just lined the top of this and again I just stapled it on nothing fancy so that when the clamps go on there they stick there's not a chance when you walk by and sort of brush against them that they're going to slide off the last clamp holder that I had that was what was happening I would walk by and brush it and one clamp would fall off and it would hit another and three or four would fall off onto the floor this way they're all firmly on there and they're easy to get at and I'll show you in the next clip here the top and the bottom of this because you may want to make something similar to this for your clamps and there's my full size view and you can see there's a piece of wood down here and another one up here of course this one down here does not need to be lined with anything because this is just a place for the clamps to bump up against but if you do make one of these don't do what I did I measured the clamp from here to here and forgetting that from time to time this sticks out so I should have measured the full part so now whenever I have to put clamps on this rack I have to turn this slightly so that they don't they're not bumping it against the wall and holding it out so if you do make one of these clamps make it a little bit deeper than what I did and they work great they're organized you can find them and it's just a, a great way of storing your clamps now here's another application that I used the thin material on and this is a, a roller from the, at the back of my table saw and because my, I move my table saw around a fair bit I don't actually have a, an outfeed table uh, I just don't have the room for it but what I did was put the anti-skid material on the bottom and I just used these, the electrical tie material to fasten it on there and it works really well it's amazing how well it grips and holds so that when you're rolling big material off the back of your table saw this doesn't tend to slide around because they're only steel legs at the bottom and if you're making a wooden one I actually I also have a wooden one that I actually glued this the material onto the bottom of and again it just holds it from moving around so there's another application for using this anti-skid material now I know a lot of you like me use your table saw as like a, a second work surface like almost like a second workbench now here I have the thick the, the the router the very thick uh, anti skid material and this is the, the what they they sell as a router base and it if you're doing some heavy planing it's probably not ideal but if you're just doing a little bit of uh, some light planing if you don't have the time to clamp or you don't want to clamp down or it's just doing some you're just doing a little bit of light planing this will work good but there's some other applications that this works even better for now from time to time I have large sheets of plywood that I'm cutting for the back of a piece of furniture or something like that and I need to cut it maybe it's too large for my saw or maybe it's some kind of a custom cut that I need to do and so you lay it down on a soft surface and it wiggles around well guess what you can put the anti-skid material underneath in this case it's on my table saw and it holds it very firmly and then you can go about uh, sometimes you're cutting it with a, a knife and sometimes you're just marking it with a, a pencil and and that leads to the next problem of course you've, you've got your single uh, your single marking like a ruler or some kind of a straight edge in this case I have a long piece of very straight aluminum and of course most of us are working alone so you hold this down and what happens you start marking and very often when you get down the end or if you're cutting and what happens but this thing moves a little bit then you end up with a line a, another line so what do you have to do you have to stop and you then have to clamp one end and clamp the other end in order to make a straight line and of course that all takes time but I found another use for the anti-skid material 
check that out. Now there's the same piece without anything on, but you can see in this case I actually used double sided tape and I put the thin material on here and there's two rows of it. You can see this row here and then there's another row down here. So it's on two sides and now when I use this, this is the straight side here, when I use this and lay it on here, it sticks like it's almost glued on and it doesn't move around for when you're marking large sheets. So there's another a double application for using this anti-slip material. So when you're working alone in your workshop, like many of us do, very often we need a third hand or almost like another person to help us do things and many times we can use clamps and we do use clamps but there are other ways of doing things that are quicker and simpler and there's lots of tools around like these uh, hockey pucks and grabbers and of course the different thicknesses of anti-skid, anti-slip material that you can use to make your life easier and less frustrating. But again, we'd like to hear from you what applications you have that you've used these materials or these anti-slip materials for uh, that we could all use and benefit from. So make your postings on, our, on this site uh, so that we can hear what you've done. I'm Colin Cadet for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.